<clears throat> All right, live stream, and there is a. Uh, you can hear my dog. Yay! <laughs> Why not? Want to uh, share this evening. First, say hey to everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. And I want to share with you all um, some cool stuff. Some cool crafting stuff. Uh, and going to be aging some of these barrels that I made. <laughs> Start off first by sharing a couple of these with you, man. I'm really happy with the way these came out. There's two different kinds here. There's the resin printed uh, barrels that um, are really, really cool. Uh, they, they offer, you know, a little bit different, I don't want to say experience because it's not like you're driving them or they're not like a car, but they offer a little different uh, feel or, or features than uh, maybe the PLA printed barrel might. Um, and and so you might not be aware. I mean, if you ever go on Etsy or anywhere to order these type of barrels uh, and you see it says like PLA or filament or resin, you might think, well, what's the difference? You know, it's just, you know, it's a one twelfth scale barrel. But there is a difference. Um, and, uh, you know, these are, I'm really excited about these. First of all, let me, I, I've got a couple I've got a blank one here, and I've got some that I'm going to, I've already painted, but I'm going to add the effect to these. Uh, but first, let me show you one that is completed, and I'm really happy with this. If you couldn't tell by my enthusiastic tone. Um, so this here is a resin printed barrel, and what it does is, this is a solid, a solid piece, okay? Uh, it's got some weight to it. The barrel's got some weight to it. Uh, it's 50 millimeters by 72 millimeters. Let's take a look and, and just double check before I, uh, but that's what I, what I print these at. Why is my micrometer my acting cuckoo? Only when you actually need something to work does it go into haywire mode. Okay, so zero it out. Okay, so uh, these barrels are printed so i print these at 50 millimeters okay 50 millimeter by 72 millimeter okay and then i have the top that goes on here uh and this is a hollow barrel let me just bring this up on the camera so you can see all the really cool little discoloration and and uh, paint peel and just general scuffing and age and wear that comes with, you know, a barrel <laughs> that you might see in some factory setting or some industrial warehouse where guys are outside taking a lunch break or a smoke break or whatever they do. Uh, this is a barrel that, first of all, it's got the really clean rings printed really nice and clean. I, I, I designed these from a blank page, which I'm really happy about. Um, everything is nice and crisp and clean. So then we add the aging and the discoloration and, and there's a real, you know, it's got a really nice smooth surface. Uh, I, I do a few different things. When I first paint this, I paint it ultimately, uh, in, in the beginning with a black matte, uh, rattle can, uh, paint. It's a paint primer. Um, it's the uh, rust paint primer and I do it in a black matte. And, uh, what, um... What that does is, is it allows me to, first of all, seal the print, you know, at the, at the core of it, you know, so, uh, and then it gives me something for the paint to stick to, but more importantly, it gives me a color to peel down to. So you see there's like black splotches here uh, in some of these, and, and that's actually what I peel down to. So it gives me a base for that. And then, um, 
then I go ahead and I add a couple different colors over the top of that and using some latex and stuff like that I create some uh, like in this one here you can see I've got a black then I've got some scuff marks that are like brownish and that's just from taking a black uh, primer first to the can then I paint over it with a rattle can with a uh, a brown rust kind of color and then I paint over it that with my ultimate color that the can is going to be so I've got three layers going here that really add some depth to the can that help you uh, just see a lot of different discoloration and patches and randomness that that makes it really cool uh, and besides yellow is my favorite color anyway I like yellow um, and so it's you know so we got that going for us uh, and inside here um, I just took and glued a little piece of uh, or not glued but double-sided tape a little piece of black plastic I want to show you the cool another cool thing about these cans is I originally I was thinking I would make this piece hollow so you could fill the can with trash but that's just like pointless you don't want to spend your time filling the whole can with trash and then getting some out the top. You want to, you know, photograph your sets and, and, and stuff like that. So what I did is, and you can see it better in one like this, where I just created a pocket, about a 20 mil deep pocket that you can fill with trash. So it kind of gives it the idea that, hey, there's a bunch of trash in the can. Another really cool thing about these cans that from the photography perspective is first of all you know you can put a lid on these uh that one doesn't go on there this is a different size lid you can put uh you know you can open these up you can put lights in them you can put stuff in them you can decorate them with hot glue and and paint to make it look like stuff is oozing out um and that was uh that's something that's you know also nice to to be able to do um there is another uh let me find what i what i'm looking for i've got a couple different things going on uh so oh another thing you can take and for example say you didn't want a uh say you didn't want the trash can right say you were like okay i don't need a trash can i just want some 55 gallon drums so the tops come off of here and you can go ahead and put your trash can or your barrel on your, your 55 gallon drum lid on there and then you can shake it or move it and it's not going to come off because i created this little lip around there sort of a not a bevel but like just a two-piece kind of like a recess there and what that does is so when you're spraying your you know your aerosol atmosphere or whatever in there uh or your fog machine you know you don't have a lid that's just sitting on top that's just going to blow off and so that's really cool from a kind of a working on your photography set you know standpoint it's it's uh there's got some practical use to the way i made some of this so once again you can do your your trash can you know or you can just turn it into a 55 gallon drum and you know you've got one barrel will come with you know two lids so that you can use that for however you want um in your in your photography set and ultimately when i put them on my website i'm going to sell them in a in a pack like that where you get the one barrel with the two lids uh and and that's a pretty cool pretty cool thing man i'm pretty excited about it so anyway this lid doesn't go on that barrel but anyway uh you know so i said all that to uh you know let's go ahead and I've got um oh uh, yellow I gotta paint this one up still uh but um let's go ahead and I want to share with you real quick I'm going to put the uh on this red can that I have here and this I need to age age this and get it get it looking more old okay so now that I told you how I do it I'm going to go about the process of doing it. I do need to get my little scuffing pad that I forgot uh, to get out over here. 
So let me get my stuffing pad. And also I have a Dremels with wire wheels that I use too that, that make a really nice uh, scuff. It makes a nice scuff. Um, so we'll start with the barrel first. And first you can see this is just a, a, a clean printed barrel. This is a PLA. You can see the spots where the latex is that I added. And what I'll do is I'll just go in there with my, my pad and this the, another reason I used this spray paint was because it was just really durable uh, and thick and strong. And so I liked that. So what we'll do is we'll just come in here and we'll just lightly scuff through some of where the latex is. And bring, bring some of that bottom coat out. Some of that base black primer at the very bottom. And we'll... Let some of it come through, just in some light light passes with the with the scuffer. Is that a thing? A scuffer? A scoffer? Don't scoff at my scuffer. Uh, so we'll we'll rub a little bit there, and uh, and also what this does is it kind of knocks down the shine a little bit. I sprayed this with a satin paint, uh, and in the end I'll probably go over it with a. Uh, when I do seal these up, I'll go over it with a um, clear spray aerosol uh, lacquer sealant. It's a, a matte finish also. Uh, so we'll just knock some of these little spots down here that uh, I know where I put the latex on and bring a little bit of that base coat out in whatever forms and patterns you want. You can go up and down, side to side. See, that paint's durable, man. Okay. Bring just a little bit more out, and there's no right way or wrong way. It's just all in how you how you feel about how you feel about it. As long as you've done the process and, and you've got those layers there to, to be able to scuff down to, then you're good. We'll just knock some of this some of these little bright spots down a little bit. We'll leave a couple in there just because who knows, there might be some shiny spots of the barrel. Never know. Knock some of this down a little bit. There's my dog. She's saving, she's saving the world from my backyard. <laughs> you know. And once we scuff this down, then I'll go through and we'll go ahead and do some pigmenting and aging of the lid and stuff like that. So we'll knock this down. Like I say, you can use a, uh, I've got sanding block. It just depends how much you want to take off at one time. The scuff pad allows me to kind of really go slow at it. If I got the wire wheel out from the uh, the Dremel, it'd get through it pretty quick. And you'd probably get right down to the white PLA. Uh, yeah, I printed this in white PLA, so we don't want to do that. I'll take my time. <laughs> take my time scuffing. And uh, so here we got a few little spots of blackout. And I do have, let's get a couple low spots here where there's no latex. And what this will do, this will create sort of a soft, soft, uh, dark spots that are, that are still red, but the black starts to lightly show through and it just kind of shows some wear as opposed to paint peeling. You know, you see a barrel or something sometimes and you see the paint starting to wear and the other color coming through, but there's no paint peeling going on yet. That's the next stage uh in the the aging so this does make a little bit of dust but hey here's what it is and so that right there you can see where i don't take the paint all the way off but i just scuff down to the black layer and allow a little bit of it to softly show through and that gives me that uh that look like that 
and we'll just do a few more areas like that in some different directions. Like this one, we'll go diagonal with it. There we go. Look at that. Different directions really help break it up. There we go. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. Just added 20 years to this thing. <laughs> need to find a way to take 20 years off that'd be nice that'd be nice for me on a personal level <laughs> you know there we are all right i think we're good good and scuffed up we grab this Brush here, not actually. I'll just blow that dust off of there. Gets a little bit dusty. Nice. All right. So next, now that we've got that scuffed down a little bit, we'll come over here to this lid. Now the lid. These lids are generally made out of like a heavy plastic when you see them out there in the. Uh, in the real world so i would like to leave not a shine on it but uh i don't really want to have any paint peeling because it would be a solid molded piece in real life and so uh we want to keep that that look going i don't want to peel down to anything so there's no latex on here for the paint peeling uh everything that i do on here for age is just going to be done with like pigment powders um since there's nothing to really scuff down to uh, and we're just going to add a little grimy, griminess to it. Uh, general, some general grime. When you go to work and they tell you to wipe down the, the, the lids, they want to remove the grime. Here, I want to add grime. And we're going to add a little grime with. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's take this brush. I don't want to go too too nuts with it right away. So, we'll dip a little, dip a little, and we'll just get right inside this crease here. Just really go to town inside that, where the top meets the ring, because that's where some grime would be, in my world anyway. That's where the grime is, all those nooks and crannies. We'll just kind of drag it around. Okay. Knock a little off. Okay. And we'll take it, we'll just blend up a little bit. We don't want a hard line of grime. We want it to softly Create some soft blending upward with it. Some gradation. We don't want banding. <laughs> all right. A little bit in there. This doesn't take long. It's just all how you want to do it. And these are the Vallejo pigments. I've got them on my website. I'll link them to the live video here. These are a great, you see me use these, these are a great uh, addition to your diorama building. I mean, these are really a great tool. You'll see here at the end of this how nice these come out. And it's fun, it's fun. I mean, you can sit here and, well, I could sit here and do this for hours, man, swirling my brush around. Hope that printer isn't too loud in the background. I've got a resin, my my any cubic uh, photon mono X is going. Okay, I think we got a little black on there. Looks good. Let's get a little around the the lid, the edge here. Kind of gets. Some... 
There we go. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, open it. Watch out for my camera. Just move the camera, you can come in. Well, I was going to say, whenever you have time to, we're going to have to just trip the bike again. Well, I'm on YouTube Live, so I don't have time right now. Uh, where's your mom? On the phone. See, when you got kids, that's that's what happens. You tell them what not to do, and they do just the opposite every time and act surprised when the outcome is the same. It's amazing. We know the breaker, which one it is, right? Yeah. Well, go go flip it. Well, that's how you told me not to. Well, I told you, I told you not to because you didn't know which one it was. You just went on YouTube to look and see which breaker that it could be and that's well, no i seen which one it was because it said if it was tripped it'd be in the middle and none of them were in the middle yeah except one youtube's not the go-to for electrical for yeah. for electrical troubleshooting in the breaker box <laughs> so go flip it and sounds good yeah. all right yeah, yeah youtube is not really the go-to for electrical troubleshooting in a breaker box <laughs> you might go to youtube for some painting <laughs> for some crafting but i don't uh, think it's the go-to for electrical electrical stuff anyway okay cool we got that it's a little black on there like we wanted um and we can take uh, I mean, I could put, uh, I think green would be a little bit much. Um, let's do a little bit of, uh, let's do some of this dark. I've got some, I'm going to, well, let me quit rambling. Let me just put a little bit of this up here just for another tone. It's a dark brown just to kind of knock some of the red down a little bit. Just knocks it down just a bit. There we go. Let's brush off a little bit of this excess. I need to get my graffiti game up also so that I can graffiti on some of these. That would be cool. In just another cool layer of of uh Coolness. <laughs> Is that a thing? A layer of coolness. Um, so, let me get... I have a... Uh, let me get this thinner over here that I can use. Um, let me do that right here. Okey -dokey -dokey -dokey. Matter of fact, I might put... I might put a little green on here. Let's... This green is calling my name for some reason. I don't get to use the green that often. So let's do a little green. Why not? Uh, let's do a little tiny bit of green inside the uh, nooks and crannies here at the base. Just a smidgen. A little green goes a long way. There we go. And I might actually do the green as a wash. I think it might end up being better. Yeah. There we go. So let's take this and a little cap and we'll kind of make some streaks and some little uh, 
like this thing may have been out in the rain somebody threw a soda on top of it kind of made it kind of just generally just generally kind of icky let's take a super small tiny little brush from over here like uh, this one right here and we'll just dab it in a few spots and let that kind of pull down there at the bottom and it's just gonna help it look kind of streaky let's do this Where's my green? Get a little dab of green on here. There we go. We'll let that run down the side a little bit. And then it kind of move it around a little bit, get it around the very base in there. Just pick a little of it back up. There we go. I don't want it so heavy on the green. <laughs> I was getting, it's getting a little ham with it. So here we go. We've got a little bit, we dabbed a little bit, took a little bit back off. There we go. And see how we got it kind of running around the rim here? That's nice. That makes it look nice and believable. Just get some of those swirls in there. They don't have to be everywhere. There we go. Let that rascally rascal dry a little bit. And it's just gonna make it, you know, you've seen these plastic cans that sit out there, these plastic lids that sit out there and get all kinds of rain and junk on them over time. They they look all kind of weird colored and that's what we're after. Okay. Get that to dry just a little bit. That's looking good. Looking nice and grimy. I like it. Okay. I'm liking that. Takes a few moments to dry. So while that's drying, we'll just set that over here. And we'll work on this can a little bit. Same thing. We'll get in there with our black and just kind of wherever you want in these rings and down here in the bottom is where I'm at that might be the wrong brush let's get a little shorter stiffer brush but not a wet one there we go that's the, that's the shape I need. And just kind of really rub it into these rings. Really. And then you can turn the brush on different sides. Get different angles out of it. Got some soot going all the way. And we'll do the same thing so you'll see the streaks and the runs in this too. really makes it look nice makes it look nice 
then you can take and just work this in. I, I work it in little circles and press it, varying the, the the pressure that I add for like blending, like if you were tattooing. Mm -hmm. more pressure at the bottom a little lighter up top there we go well, i like that that's looking good get him girl get him girl do your thing all right we're getting some age going on in there I like that it's looking nice For on the red, uh, we can do. You know, I've got a white also, but I can do. I can do some reflection, maybe with uh, some dry brushing later. I don't think I want to use white on there. That'd really <laughs> show up a lot on there. Let's try one of these really dark ones. I don't know how well the dark one's going to show up on here, but what have I got to lose? What have I got to lose? this in here so I can make a little bit of a wash out of this and what we'll do I hope hopefully the camera's gonna pick this up good we're gonna go ahead and do some washes now so we get some drips and stuff going down in there kind of like I did on this other one we'll start it at the like in a ring and then kind of let it run down let the ring catch it add a little bit more that way we get a nice drip over the edge and it kind of continues down the barrel kind of over apply it hopefully the camera will pick this up and we'll let this let gravity help us out here there we go Come on, gravity. Need a little bit more liquid. That should do it right there. There we go. Now we got a drip going. Nice. Couple more in here. Let the rings. A nice drip down there that'll work we're just after a few drips
Okay. If I keep hitting the camera with my hat brim. Okay. We'll let this dry for a moment and we will work on this lid. And the lid, we're just going to make it sop a little of this up here that we've got on the Matter of fact, let me scuff the lid up a little bit so that this uh, stuff will stick to it a little bit better. That paint is really durable, but if we scuff this up, then uh, that will help those powders stick a lot more. There we go. There we go. Much better. I'm being cheap and trying to use what's on the paper here. I need black. There's not enough black on the paper. That's what I get for trying to be cheap. Just get some black, man. Get some black out of here. There we go. You don't need black everywhere. There's some patches of it. There we go. Just a few little patches of it. That'll give us a nice little swirl. Once that dries and settles down, it'll swirl it in there and make it look like there'd been fluid pooling on there at one time or something. That's how they look at my job. <laughs> and that'll dry, you know, like that with those kind of swirls and little blobby bits of, uh, you know, random patterns that you get. And that'll dry. And look really cool. Okie dokie. Okie dokie dokie dokie. We're good with that. I'm wondering uh, if I should put my. Ooh, look at that, see? Kind of like eating Cheetos. Uh, wondering if I should put my. heat gun on here just to heat this up a little bit and I'll tell you another really cool thing about these barrels uh, is when you do it with PLA I don't know if I mentioned it before but I can heat this up with my heat gun and deform the can a little bit so that you get some bent damaged cans that look really cool I should do that I should do that really quickly uh, let's see should I do that really quickly yeah why not why not? Let's, let's see if I can uh, plug the heat gun in to one of my remaining outlets. <laughs> but I don't have it over here by the uh, by the camera, uh, so that's not going to work. <laughs> I will do it, and I will show you later. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so let's take a look at. Let's see how well this comes up on the screen here. I want to show you this lid. And let me get a little, a little pointer, a little pointer. So you can see all the swirls and the discoloration in here, the random greens and blacks that add to the 
overall see the little wet marks they dry and it creates these little just bits of it just breaks up the red and that really that really helps uh, add to the idea that this is you know aged um, you know we can do a trash can like this here put a can liner around the edge shove it with uh, shove it full of trash or you can do a 50 you know what let's uh let's break that up a little bit too since I've got some extra thinner out Just make some swirls in here. Break that up. Just a bit. Oh yeah. Good choice. Good choice, Mr. Duggar. Move some of that pigment around in there. I like it. I like it. Okay. So we're looking good there. And uh, let me, I need to paint this one, but I'll do that later. But see, fits right on there, man. You know, make your little can, make your little barrel, whatever you want, you know. And, uh, and that's how I'm going to end up selling these is with one can and two lids uh, painted. Um, but at any rate, I just wanted to share with you, friends, uh, you know how we might come to decorate some of this stuff and uh you know the 3d printing i will say you can overuse it in dioramas part of the fun for me in 3d printing and learning this is that i can make stuff i can 3d print stuff that i can't make or that I could make but wouldn't look as good and I don't want it to look crafted necessarily. You know, like a brick or a stone wall, you might want to look crafted, handcrafted. But a barrel, you don't really want it to look like you made it out of a toilet paper roll. You know what I mean? So there's a different look that it offers and some props in your set, you know, um, benefit from the 3D print look. Uh, and some benefit from the handcrafted look and you can put them all together and create some really cool stuff and i really do uh i'm glad i i've been taking the time to really learn and get uh an understanding of how to 3d print and use it and add it to you know the uh scenes that i that i photograph um and i will say that i'm not the kind of guy that likes to just go and print stuff out that other people have made I'm the kind of guy that likes to get right to how do you learn to make the stuff <laughs> you know and and that's and that's what I did with these there's probably some 57 million barrel designs on thingiverse or something like that but what I didn't see was a cool trash can lid <laughs> I didn't see that that's the fun part for me in crafting and making and designing and being creative is when uh, I can do it myself. Yeah, I could, you know, print somebody else's probably and save myself the time. But it wouldn't be mine. I couldn't say that this photography set, everything you see here except the action figure, I made it. And to me, that's what I really like about uh, crafting and making making diorama sets i i really like the ability to be able to say i made that and uh without having to explain well yeah i made that except for this and this and that and this everything else though i <laughs> you know what i mean i like to be able to say i did it let me try to uh adjust my camera angle here and just share something real quick and uh see if we can if I can show you how some of this stuff looks against like a, a diorama wall or something uh, give me one second we'll move some of these things out of the camera frame and uh, bring over a piece of 
Boom. This isn't really that exciting of a piece of foam, but it's a generic industrial ground. <laughs> That's all I need. Warehouse kind of ground. Ah, uh, it's just set this all up right here real quick and we'll just see how these kind of look you know uh, with a figure inside let me adjust my camera I don't want to make you dizzy I'm going to bring the GoPro down a little bit so be prepared there we go one more adjustment and there we go alright so, we've got a trash can here, and we've got a, a drum here, and heck, we've got a, let's get a figure and put in there, might as well, might as well, let's get a propane tank also, and a box, just some random, some random stuff. You know that we can put in here and a wall that that falls there we go I mean all this stuff just really really brings it all together man and a radio can't be at the back dock without a radio let's see how a, a figure a six inch figure looks up next to these props here there you go Man, I think that looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, but at any rate, appreciate you folks watching. Like and subscribe. I've got a video coming out on a brick. A new kind of material I used for a brick wall. I'm going to work on the editing of that probably tonight or tomorrow and get it uh, get it put up for you here before the weekend's over so you have another cool crafting video to look at. Uh, like and subscribe. I appreciate everybody's watching and being enthusiastic and having a good time with me. And uh, let me get my phone over here and end the live stream. And you guys take care and have a great weekend.